Humans have been called the hairless ape, a description which has one problem, it's completely wrong. As we saw in another video, we humans have as many hairs on our bodies as gorillas and chimpanzees. It's just they're much smaller and finer. Well, usually. You can see this more clearly on your skin when you get goosebumps. We argued that this may have come about as a response to the need to reduce body heat whilst hunting over the hot plains of Africa. Hunting uses a lot of energy and generates body heat. On the other hand, gathering food like chimpanzees and gorillas does take time, but not much energy, so both these species have retained their body hair. Unfortunately, one thing we can't check up on is to see if all human species, going back one and a half million years to Homo erectus and Homo ergaster, had long head hair, or if it's just a recent phenomenon. Animal remains left in the ground usually go through a process called fossilization where the organic compounds are substituted with minerals so that eventually all organic tissue and genetic information is lost. This means DNA analysis can't be used on really old fossils. At least that doesn't stop us thinking about where long hair came from. But first, it's not difficult to see why head hair should exist. The human brain, after all, is extremely important. Protecting it from sun, cold and some trauma with a good covering of hair makes perfect sense. But human hair can easily grow over one meter long, or in the case of Xie Jiping of China, who's grown her hair for over 40 years, over five meters long. The usual catch-all in evolutionary theory is that if you come across a puzzling characteristic then you generally can't go far wrong in ascribing it to sexual selection. This theory by Charles Darwin in simple terms maintains that if, say, the female of a species finds certain characteristics in males attractive strength, good muscles, loud voice, long legs then there'll be a preference to mate with males who have these characteristics in abundance. This then should result in two outcomes male offspring will generally have the same successful characteristics as their fathers and female offspring will also have their mother's same preference for them. Normally over generations this selection pressure keeps males and females fit and on the ball but if the preference is for the bigger the better then things can get out of hand and can lead to oddities such as peacock's tails, huge antlers or large differences in body size between the sexes. This is sometimes called runaway selection. So thick lustrous hair may be considered a sign of health and youth and therefore an advantage in mate selection. However, if pushed to an extreme bisexual selection, hair may grow far longer than necessary to accomplish its original aim of protecting the head and the brain. Usually examples of sexual selection have an effect on one sex only. Bright colours and special vocalisations in male birds, increased size in body or horns and antlers in many male mammals, and so on. The problem with humans, of course, is that both sexes can grow long hair. And if we're keen on using the theory of sexual selection, this indicates successful mutual admiration based on just one extreme characteristic which is unusual, but not as we can see unique. By the way, you might be forgiven for thinking only women have long hair. Even scientists sometimes talk of long hair in humans as a female sexual characteristic only. One of the slightly bizarre aspects of modern globalization is that wherever you look in the world, in virtually any culture, you'll find men with short hair. Long hair is nowadays considered feminine, and for some people, the wild and woolly look is a sign of inferior status or trouble. So, whereas women generally still look natural with long hair, men in their natural state should look like this, but nearly always end up looking like this. But many cultures used to have long male hair as standard. Native American men, for instance, used to grow their hair past their waist, as do Sikhs today. British sailors in the 18th century were famous for their long hair, kept in queues or ponytails, as were the Chinese in the Qing dynasty. 
and Bedouin tribesmen until recently. In fact, long hair for men was often the norm rather than the exception. Okay, let's assume we're not happy with the notion of sexual selection, then maybe we should take a look at a few more theories. Now, if you really want to get up the nose of a human evolutionary biologist, then just mention the aquatic ape theory. This theory is based on the fact that, just as other apes are quite at home in the water, much human evolutionary development must have come from adapting to life in rivers and seashores looking for food. These include improved bipedalism and balance, loss of hair to adapt to life in water, a larger brain through an improved fishy diet, and long hair. Why long hair? Well, while mother is foraging for food in the water, a small child can hang onto her long hair while swimming next to her. The main problem with the theory is that it puts the cart before the horse. Most of those developments are more easily explained by a life on land, with occasional use of rivers and shores, rather than a total adoption of aquatic life. Okay, maybe we should look elsewhere. How about considering horses tails? A horse has a long hairy tail which it uses to flick insects away from its rump. As humans lost their fur, long hair hanging down the now unprotected back could perform the same function by keeping pests away and shading the spine from the sun. How about the that's just the way things go hypothesis? Long hair may have been as a result of some genetic mutation which didn't actually cause any problems and was even attractive to some. Given it's not difficult to get rid of long hair, maybe it just stuck around in the gene pool long enough until it became popular and then took over. Who knows? To be honest, as far as human long hair theories are concerned, your guess is still as good as anyone's.